Welcome back to the channel. Today I am driving a 2021 Ram 2500. This is a mega cab with a black, or they call it night edition, but it's a blackout package. And today we're going to see if this truck can tow a small Grand Design fifth wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm heading over to Beckley's Camping Center right now. They have a Grand Design 295 RL. We're going to just see the numbers on the door of this truck. We're going to compare with the trailer. We're going to put it in a spreadsheet and we're going to see if this truck can actually tow a fifth wheel. Now, if you haven't done so yet, be sure to like and subscribe, but we're not going to do a walk around in this truck. I am going to show you around it really quickly. So go ahead and take a look at it. Alright guys, so as you guys can see this has the black interior, this is a Laramie package. So you can get the night edition package in the Bighorn and the Laramie. And they actually added a night package for the limited also. So you really have a lot of options here with Ram. And I think that they, they're doing it the best, but this interior is pretty much decked out. It has a 12 inch display, it has the rear view camera that you've seen on the GM trucks. They actually adopted that for Ram, so I'm glad they did that. And this truck has a sunroof. I mean, it has everything. I mean, this is a really nice truck. And the only thing it doesn't have that I probably would like to see is just the air suspension. On the three quarter ton of trucks, this truck rides the best with air. So just keep that in mind if you are planning on building this truck. And man, even if you know, you're not too concerned about the ride, this truck rides the best I think even unloaded with that five link coiled suspension on this truck too but if you're moving from a half ton truck I think the air suspension would make the truck better to live with day to day Look, I'm just gonna lay into it nicely on this launch Ooh, there's no lag at all man guys she wins the 60 RV is the best way to go if you're not really towing a trailer. I mean, or if you are towing, but you're not towing a lot, which I think majority of the guys and girls out there with these trucks don't tow a lot. That 60 RFE puts that power down a lot faster. However, when the Eisen does get going, I've said it a million times, it is a rocket ship too, but it just takes a little bit more time to, to get off the line compared to the 60 RFE. Now, if you're not familiar with the Ram 2500, this is going to have two engine options. You're going to have the 6.4 liter V8, and you're going to have what this has, which is an optional Cummins. It's going to have 370 horsepower, 850 pounds of torque. It's made it to a 68 RV transmission, as I just said, and it has a 373 rear axle. That's the only axle option you can get with the Rams on the diesel three quarter ton and one ton single rear wheel. And as far as your capacities go for your tanks, it does have a 5.7 gallon depth tank. The diesel tank is about 31 gallons. And this takes, I believe, 13, oh, excuse me, 12 quarts of oil. I'm trying to remember these numbers for you guys. But we just pulled into Beckley's Camping Center. I gotta go down here and see if this trailer is open. If not, I have to come back up here and get a key for you guys. So. Real quickly, I'm going to show you around the trailer really quickly. I'll show you the numbers and then we'll jump over to the spreadsheet. 
Check out who it is. What's up? What's How's up, it going, bro? man? Good, man. Good to Good. see you. It's beautiful out today, yeah? Hey, yeah, hey guys, if you have not done so yet, subscribe to this yes, guy's sir. channel. We're going to be doing some more collaborations together. He yep. always hooks me up with these videos. He sells me every one of my trailers. Thank you, bro. Thanks, bro. Have a good day. You too. Thanks, Hi, guys. So Justin just opened up the RV for me. I'm just going to show you guys really quickly. I wish I had the wifey here so you guys could check this thing out. But, man, this is really nice. This is this is big. I, I was not expecting this to be this big, actually. Maybe I opened up the wrong RV, but... We're just gonna have to roll with it today. So 295 RL. I was actually looking for a little bit smaller one, but hey, this thing is really, really massive. Look at all the countertop space. Look at the backsplashes in here. They have lights, USBs. I mean, there's so much countertop space. This sink doesn't have a divider. It's a huge plus for my wife. And again, even around the stove, you have countertop space. They have a plug, residential size, uh, what's this called, microwave? And this is just a, eh, this is a little small, but hey, if you're not full time, I mean, this should be perfect. I mean, this probably would be perfect for two people in terms of size, but a lot of storage. They give you a small pantry and it does have lights if you need that. You can put a pack of water down there and yeah, fireplace just below. I'm sure this pulls out into a bed. It looks like these seats are heated and powered. Oh wow, I like that they give you a bench on this side. And then they give you the chairs also on this side. Really cool setup. I would like to see an in command system. I like the electronics, guys, I'll be honest. But hey, this works too. Check out the materials on the walls. Walking up and to the left is your bathroom, pocket door. porcelain toilet and then they have your storage just back here they give you a sensor light inside the bathroom too shower is kind of small a lot of countertop space and medicine I like that they give you this uh, sensor light and they also give you a light on the switch too right here Walking into the bedroom, they give you another pocket door. There's no slide back in this area, and that's probably a good thing. So when you're traveling, if you just wanna come up here for the night and go to sleep, you have your bathroom, and boom, you have your, your bedroom. Pretty spacious inside. I believe this is a queen size bed. Not bad, guys. Really, really, really nice. And like my wife always says, a pocket door makes life a lot easier. Yeah, you know, so you're not always maneuvering around doors. And it gives you a magnet. And some drawers. Wow, pretty deep. You put your television on the wall. It's not ideal, but it works. And this is a pretty big closet. I don't see that you can put a washer and dryer hook up in here. And they do give you some storage just below the bed so one thing I like to point out is my bed is over the slide and if you put anything heavy they put this cheap it's like this basically like on the bottom of your of this drawer is what the bottom of my uh, bed storage is and if you put heavy stuff like this box oh yeah this box would, would, would damage it this has a solid floor surface and this is so much better guys so Definitely keep that in mind when you're looking at your RVs. Lastly, they give you two USBs and a spot up top, probably for like your phones maybe. And storage on that side too. Sorry, it's dark in there. And then they give you lights on each side and then this additional storage on the side of the bed. And look how big this window too is on the side. The storage compartment is not huge, but it's going to be bigger than most of your travel trailers. They do give you power, lights. I would like to see sensor lights in here. And this is going to be for your battery disconnect. And I love that they give you a metal latch too. 
Yeah, it's metal. Aluminum steps. You have an awning close to the front and one out back on the slide. They do give you nitrogen fill in the tires and then you do have a Cree 3000 through more ride for the suspension. So this is a really nice fifth wheel. You have a rack and pinion slide. Let's hop over to the other side. Actually, one thing I like to always test out too is can you slide between, because where I have the trailer located right now is pretty much where the fifth wheel would be. This is gonna be the back of your water heater, your suburban furnace, your 50 amp connection, and this is a rack and pinion slide too. So this is gonna have a gross fuel weight of 10,995. The gross axle weight rating is gonna be 5,100 pounds per axle. And then unload is 8,998. So this is gonna have a cargo carrying capacity of 1,937 pounds. And these are gonna be the numbers for this Ram 2500. You're gonna have a gross axle weight rating in the front at 6,000. The rear is gonna be 6,040 with a 10,000 pound GVWR. Now with all the options and features this truck has, you have a total payload capacity of 1,768 pounds. These are gonna be the advertised numbers that they show online. Now unloaded vehicle weight, as you guys saw, the trail that we reviewed had a slightly higher number. Now, as far as the hitch weight goes, some of you guys have asked me, why don't you use what's online? Now, if you take the advertised hitch weight of 1391, and divide it into this 8794, it's giving you a percentage of about 16%, it's like 15.8 to be exact, but they're saying this trailer unloaded is 16% hitch weight. Now, because I'm someone who likes to overestimate just to make sure we do things the right way, I'm going to use 19% in this situation, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the actual unloaded vehicle weight of the trailer that you just saw, and we're gonna multiply that by 19%. I'm on Ram's website right now for a Mega Cab Bighorn. So we looked at a Laramie, had a lot of options on it. They're saying that the payload was 2,040 pounds. So the one you just saw for this specific truck was 1768. So with all the options added to that truck, that's how much payload you lost. So if you want more payload, you're gonna have to go for a lower trim package. Now with this truck, 373 axle, as you saw, um, they're saying that the gross combined weight rating is 25,265 with a towing capacity of 15,690. So as you guys saw for the grand design, we're perfect on towing capacity. However, this is where we're gonna have the biggest issue. So let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. These are gonna be the numbers for the Ram 2500 we just reviewed, and this is the numbers for the fifth wheel for the grand design. Now. I have the numbers at 8,998. That's the actual unloaded vehicle weight. Without any passengers, any cargo guys, we're just under the payload. So the payload is 1768, and we have 1710 for the hitch weight. I got 1710 from the 8,998 pound unloaded vehicle weight. I multiplied it by 19% to get the 1710. Now, obviously, we have to add passengers. So passengers, figure it's a couple's trailer. Husband's gonna be 200 pound, wife is 130, so that's gonna be 330 here. And figure a 200 pound hitch plus another 150 pounds for gear. That should be a safe estimate for that. Now we're at 622, so we're basically over on the payload now. Now keep in mind, nobody goes camping, you know, without some gear, right? So we have to add at least a thousand pounds to this. So let's go ahead and take this number we're going to multiply that by 19%. I know the manufacturer used a lower number, but we're just going to say worst case scenario. They're saying the hitch weight's about 16%. I like 19% better. I normally go with 20% just because that's about what I've noticed the hitch weight to be from other people's um, posts that they give me of their um, CAT scales. So we'll just go 19% because this is a pretty low number for the manufacturer. So 1900 you're at 812 pounds over your payload. Here's my opinion. If this was me buying this trailer, I would recommend going with the gross fuel weight rating, multiplying that 
by 20% to get your hitch weight. Now, if I was looking to buy this trailer also, what truck would I buy? I would be on the lookout for a truck that has a payload of at least at least 3,300 pounds. And the reason why is because you wanna have more truck than you need because even with 3,300 pounds, you only have 720 pounds available here. And let's just say this was a, um, a bunkhouse. You have three kids. And let's just move this up to 700 pounds. You know, already you're getting close to that number here. So you have to be careful on your gear. You have to be careful on the passengers that you carry with you. And you have to make sure you buy enough truck for your fifth wheel because if you think about it, this is a small fifth wheel. And even with this number, you're really close in terms of your payload capacity. But hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Now, one thing I wanna say is this, you have to do your own research. I believe that you should stay within the limits of your GVWR of your truck. And again, hey, at the end of the day, that truck that you just saw is more than capable of towing 14, 15,000 pounds, like I said. The only thing that limits it is that payload capacity. So just make sure before you buy a truck, before you buy a fifth wheel, make sure you have the right setup because I think that doing this Weight Watchers uh, series does kind of help bring awareness. So be sure to share this with people who may not know about these things or might be in a market to buy a fifth wheel or any type of trailer for that fact. So they make sure they buy enough truck. I mean, at the end of the day, the best truck to buy if you're looking to buy a fifth wheel is a dually. It's the best option on the market because typically you're gonna have 5,000 pounds or more payload. And there's really not a lot of trailers out there that you can't tow with the dually. So just keep that in mind. But um, be sure if you have any uh, suggestions, I wanted to start this series just called Weight Watchers Truck Edition. If you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get through to them. I will be honest with you guys, I have been like inundated with like comments. Like I can't even keep up anymore. Like I'm just hearting stuff now. So again, like I said, thank you guys again for your support and I will see you guys soon.